Hi everyone and welcome. Uh, today in this video I want to show you how to install the new Microx version that is embedding uh, asynchronous uh, mocking features. Uh, it allows you to uh, mock and test uh, async API based on uh, event brokers like Kafka for example. So uh, I'm I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you how to install this on, a, on your laptop using a simple uh, Minikube uh, Kubernetes cluster. So I have just starting a Minikube instance. I'm uh, using Kubernetes 1.18 version like this and I have opened the dashboard. On this instance, I have just um, uh, enabled the following add-ons. You will need the dashboard, of course, the a storage place, and the ingress add-ons. One thing that needs to be done on the ingress is to uh, enable the TLS pass-through settings for the, uh, the Nginx uh, ingress controller. So basically, you can just realize this by editing the ingress Nginx controller I'm going to show you here and I'm going to check that it is already done. Just looking at the controller deployment and you can see that it has the enable SSL pass-through flag that is set. So we are now ready to go. So uh, on this uh, Minikube installation, so this is uh, just uh, the basic default installation. So we have no specific namespaces, okay? And we're gonna start by create a new um, namespace for the micro setups. In order to uh, install all the, the components related to the asynchronous mocking, we need a Kafka broker deployed on her Minikube instance. And for that, we will use the streamz.io um, project. StreamZ uh, provides an operator that uh, is the deployment of uh, Kafka brokers onto Kubernetes. So I'm here, I'm using the N chart provided by StreamZ and I want to uh, install this operator in the Microx namespace I just created. Okay, so just looking at the namespace, we should have some um, pods starting on that is uh, that are the, the pods of the cluster operator for StreamZ. Okay, and now all the prerequisites are there. We just have to install uh, the Microx 1.0 uh, release using, uh, for example, the end chart. So remember right now, this is uh, not a release worked. We are working on a branch, okay? And um, things are quite stable right now, but maybe uh, there will be some minor changes in the next weeks. So basically, I'm just using a, a Helm chart for installing Macrox. This is the command. Okay, so I'm just providing a name for my application. Just telling I want the asynchronous features on just right here. I have to provide also some URLs for the different components and a URL for my Kafka broker. So basically we will just use here the IP address of the Minikube instance followed by a, a DNS service like a NIP or zip.io for example. So that's all we need for now. Just press enter and let the Elm chart do its work. Okay, so we have a status message. Uh, we can see that Microx will be available just right here. Uh, Keyclock will be available just right here so that we will be able to configure um, an identity provider for our installations. And then we will have the, the Kafka broker that will be up and running there in a few minutes. Okay, so now just let go to the Kubernetes dashboard to follow the deployment.
after switching to Chrome. Then looking at my Microx namespace, okay. And yeah, deployment is going on. You can see that the, the key clock instance is already there, okay. And the Kafka uh, broker is uh, still being deployed. So maybe we are gonna watch this. It should only take one minute or two. So get pod minus n microx namespace minus w to watch this. So everything is running, but pods are not yet ready. I think they are waiting for the, the Kafka broker to be to be there. Okay, it is running. Just waiting a few seconds. The Kafka entity operator is now ready. So everything should now be fine. Okay. We are going to start uh, configuring the key clock instance uh, in order to be able to log in to the application. So just take this URL here, going to the browser and opening this URL. It is using a self-signed certificate, so we should accept it and we are logged into key clock. Okay, we now required a username and a password to log in. So just check in the Kubernetes namespace. We should have a secret that has been created for us. A secret that is named key clock secret, key clock admin. Just here it is. And then here we can have the password and the username used for key clock. So just copy pasting here and there. Okay. We are now able to create new users or to configure an identity provider for our key clock instance. Okay. Just right here, I'm going to create a new user that is called uh, with my email address. Okay. So here the user is enabled. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna uh, set it some password for it. Okay, and this is not a temporary password. And we're gonna uh, give this user some uh, roles, for example, admin and manager. Okay, just right here. So we have an identity provider configured for um, uh, connecting to micro. So. Now let's go back to the Microx ingress, just right here. Just opening it in a new tab. Okay, here it is. Same thing as previously, this is a self-signed certificate. So now I can log in using my previously created user. Okay. And now I'm connected into the Microx UI. Okay, just looking at the API and services repository and it is empty. That's quite normal because it's a fresh install. And uh, the first thing to do is to import uh, new uh, API definitions within our repository. And uh, because we want to test and to show the, the new asynchronous feature, we are gonna, gonna use a sample that is using um, a sync API uh, specification. It is provided within the Microx GitHub repository and it is defining a, a simple asynchronous API. So we're gonna just retrieve this, the raw URL right here, create a new importer. So this is a, a user signed up 
uh, API, this is the repository URL, just next and create it. And just right here, my Crux has started importing the API specification and discovering new services. And this services is our user signed up API with this uh, 0.1.1 .1 version. Okay. So it has found an operation that is a subscribe operation and it has started publishing some mocks on a dynamically created Kafka endpoint just right here. So right now, if everything is okay, we just have to uh, connect to our Kafka broker using whatever uh, client we have and uh, we uh, may start receiving some mock messages published by the macro microx okay so first thing first let's tr let's retrieve yes the broker url this is it but previously because it is a, a secured broker using tls we have to extract the secret of uh, this uh, this broker that should be used by a uh, client so i'm gonna change here to switch to a, a kafka client written in node.js so first thing i'm gonna extract the, um, the the certificate from the secret okay this is d CR, crt yes that's it and just right now, I'm going to uh, try to connect to my broker using uh, this uh, certificate. So this is the simple client I have. So I'm trying to connect to the, um, to the Microx Kafka broker that has been dynamically provisioned for us. This is the topic I want to listen to. This uh, topic was indeed uh, created here while discovering my asynchronous API. So this is the Kafka topic. And this is just the certificate I want to use to, to connect and to, to the broker and to retrieve my messages. So just connecting, starting my client, joining the consumer groups, and messages should start yes so basically you can see here that we received uh, two messages that were defined indeed into my api specifications we see there is um, some kind of a random identifier here and this is a, a timestamp here uh, and this uh, data is indeed uh, generated from the uh, different data I have put into my API specification. So I can use some uh, uh, function like this, a random string or now timestamp. And basically I'm producing two message, two messages, one that is called Laurent and one that is called John. And this is done every 10 seconds. So looking back at my client, I can see that I'm receiving these new messages every 10 seconds. So basically this ends up our demonstration today. So you can see that with Microx, you can have a very rapidly a platform for mocking your asynchronous API. So even if we, you do not have even starting uh, implementing the API, once you've got the specification uh, following the async API specification, we are you are able to start producing mocks so that consumers of your future event can start working in parallel of uh, your uh, your implementation. So it really ease up uh, the communication between the teams. It really speed ups the development, and it's just microx. Thanks a lot for for your attention. Bye bye.